Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Alex Waldman, and I'm here tonight with Dr. Ilan Abramowitz. We're here to talk about all things ortho, but especially about virtual consultation. So uh, knowing Ilan, this is going to be a fantastic interview, and uh, here, here we go. So for those all of right. you who don't know Dr. Ilan Abramowitz, I will give a brief introduction. Dr. Abramowitz practices in Florida, just outside of Tampa, and also just outside of Orlando. Uh, Dr. Bromwitz um, moved to Florida in 2009, correct? Uh, well, officially we moved in 2004 for the residency Got in it. Jacksonville. In, in, in Jacksonville, fantastic. So you've been there for a while. That's been 16 years now already. Oh and man. It goes by really quickly. Too fast. Us. Yeah. And the reason that we're interviewing Dr. Abramowitz tonight is because he is a master of all things innovation in orthodontics, all things digital. He loves uh, creating new systems in his office, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, and uh, we all have a lot to learn from Dr. Abramowitz. So Elon, why don't we jump right into the interview? Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your journey with virtual consultations. I know that um, uh, you, you mentioned to me as we were kind of getting ready for this interview that you started using virtual consultations back way before COVID actually in November, 2019. Can you tell us that story? That's right. First, I wanna thank you for having me on, Alex. I appreciate it. And oh, uh, yeah. It, yeah, thank you. And as far as virtual goes, yeah, I've been looking into it since, um, probably early 2019, because I saw, I saw some things different going on in the culture. I saw what, you know, what Amazon was doing. And um, I just saw what, what I was doing to do shopping. So I was looking for a while. Mm -hmm. And the key thing I was looking for um, was something that was a little bit quicker than what we had available. So yeah. what we started with was this, those, those instant messages that probably most of us have on our website now, except the only problem was it was only workable during working hours. Yeah. So I, I was really, really looking for something that I could go straight to my phone as, as a texting agent. So I knew everything instantly and I could respond instantly. And when we first met, um, that's when we, you know, I found something that actually fit that mold. And, and that was SmileSnap. Mm -hmm. Great. And so that was November 2019. So you, yep. you started using it. Um, and fast forward now to March 2020. COVID hits, um, what had you learned in that uh, four or five month period there that you already were implementing consultations that allowed you to like efficiently pivot during the shutdown or you know whatever you experienced in Florida there for those few months? Okay, so so basically we were able to work out the kinks you know, before COVID because we did have a, what, like five months and uh, we were able to come up with a, you know, a assignment, if you would, where I could delegate most of the work to um, our treatment coordinator and our our managing position, which is the director of operations. And, um, and so it was pretty smooth and uh, it did, it, it was doing pretty well. I mean, we had about two, two exams a week on that. And then, you know, when COVID hit- Prior to COVID, you're saying? Prior to COVID, prior, sorry, to, COVID, prior yeah. to COVID, we were about two a week. And, um, and then when COVID hit, I mean, it just, it just blew up. That's the best way to describe it. It blew up and there were some times where we'd have five, six a day. And, and those are people just organically finding you through your website? Correct, they were correct. So, you know, in the beginning they would find the website organically and they would, you know, select, you know, hey, are you guys open? Sure, and we can do a virtual exam. And then we started to market it on, you know, the social media, the SEOs. And um, now, I mean, regularly during the, during the regular work week, we get about three or four. And then on weekends, we still get about three to four a weekend. And, wow. and, and, and uh, it's taught me a lot about, you know, the people that we are, because they're all like us. You know, they get on their phone anywhere between 10 and 2 a.m. And, you know, believe it or not, three a week or we'll want their ortho exam at that time. Interesting. And it's just yeah. to be, yeah, yeah, just to be able to do it and, and respond to them at 6, 6 30, 7 a.m. It, it's, it's, been, it's been amazing. Fantastic. Um, you spoke about when we were kind of, um, you know, you know, getting this scheduled and, and getting this all together uh, for tonight. You, you mentioned to me that you know, you were hoping to share some thoughts about uh, things you've learned um, from doing your SmileSnap virtual consultations. 
things you've yes. learned are now kind of like applied to your regular consultation. So that, that sounded really interesting. And I was wondering if you can dial that in for us. Okay, absolutely, absolutely. So before I go now, what I want to say is, is I, I, you know, I, I, I like to give people what they want. So my goal has always been to give patients what they want. And, and what, you know, the COVID-19 and these virtual exams showed me is, they just want answers to their main question and they all differ, right? But the majority just had one or two questions and um, to be able to answer that for them virtually in such a short period of time um, with such a high success rate. I mean, the closing start rate was 92%. Wow. Um, yeah, so what we did was we realized that, you know, maybe we're doing a little too much in our exams. We're just talking too much. We, we need to be more of a listener and we need to significantly reduce the time because people's lives are incredibly busy especially right. now that are, a lot of them are stuck at home with their kids, you know, mm -hmm. they, they, they just have so much going on. So we reduced our real exams to 30 minutes. And in that time, we do it just like it's done virtually where we'll get the pictures real quick and I'll just kind of listen to what they, what they're looking for. And uh, at that point, we've pretty much closed the deal before we've taken our official records and we've, before we've taken our panoramic, before I've done my exam. And, um, and it saves a lot of time and there has not been one unhappy patient. They love coming in and, you know, being done if they're not ready to start in 30 minutes or less. And if they are ready to start, then, you know, we were able to keep them an hour or sometimes even bond the same day. So if I, yeah, if I could share anything, it's, you know, just take into account what the patients want and just realize that some of them, most of them just want to come in and get an answer to one or two questions. Interesting. So so you basically took what I guess was once like a 60 minute process where like the decision might've been like the culmination of that hour to kind of like more getting straight to the point, kind of and then using whatever time, if they should proceed, <laughs> you then kind of um, will do the contract. Correct. Well, or, then we'll take it longer. Then we'll get yeah, the contract. The time. Then and, we'll, we'll yeah. get the better records. Then we'll take the panel, evaluate them. I'll sit down yeah. and do my exam. Um, but we've done that after that initial discussion and it's completely changed wow. things so you're basically i mean this is brilliant i mean really what you're doing is you're you're really thinking the way a consumer is thinking that you exactly. know i want questions asked. i want to know how long it's going to take i want to know how much time it's going to take and so you're basically providing like a real world smile snap experience in your office exactly Come exactly in, because you know with your experience now being in practice for 15 years you know that you can just look at that and you basically, you might not have a pan yet, and maybe you need that for certain cases, right? So you take that, I guess, yep. to make a condition or something. But sure. if you have a patient where you can look at their teeth, uh, do a quick look, look at the photos and kind of have a sense, you're able to give them that information and that doesn't lock them into kind of all these thoughts and they're just That's kind right. of focusing on what's important to them. And then- Exactly, so just what's important to them. Yeah. yeah, and then the thing, I think I want us all to build confidence in is, there has not been one patient where I, if, you know, they have the impacted tooth that I wasn't sure about, where they're missing a tooth. Not one of them was unhappy when I came back later and said, hey, you know what, we took the records and here's what yeah. we found. And you know yeah. what, the treatment's going to take a little bit longer and you've got some things to think about. It hasn't upset one person. Yeah. And that's the same thing like you would do in a virtual console, right? Like you sometimes exactly. don't know until you take, take the pants. You say, well, if it's going to be this, then you know, uh, we'll go ahead and proceed. But if we see something on the pan, obviously we'll talk about it. And so they exactly. understand that it's not Absolutely. the full answer, but yeah, beautiful. Wow, Elon, that is like uh, a little bit mind blowing, I have to say, um, how you're doing that. I know everyone is kind of um, changing really how they practice um, due to COVID. Obviously this is a huge time saver for you. Uh, okay. Obviously it's in, improved your conversion rate, all of that. Absolutely. Um, let's kind of uh, uh, step away from virtuals for a minute, because I'm sure a lot of people, uh, you, you're known for your efficiencies, um, you're known for running a great practice and a great business. Um, what are what else are you doing in your practice now um, for COVID? Um, any special marketing things, any special clinical things? Um, like, what do you feel is going on out there that okay. you're... Uh, there's a lot of questions out there, a lot of questions, and a lot of people, they're just kind of frustrated. Um, so, you know, unfortunately we had to do what everyone else did. We had to rework our whole schedule. Um, cause obviously the team is number one and the team's main concern with our old schedule was with all these new guidelines, we, you know, we just don't have time. We don't have time. We can't communicate now with, you know, feel like we're a drive through, right. Or you can't eat inside. So our parents have to sit in their cars. So, um, 
what we've done is we've kind of changed the schedule. We've added about five minutes to every single possible schedule. So now there's a little lag time for, you know, to make sure we can either call or face the parents of, uh, you know, the younger patients um, via telephone or face-to-face -face outside in the car, just to kind of explain what we're doing. Um, that's been one key thing. So, you know, um, the other thing we've done with this new um, exam template is our exams cut from an hour to 30 minutes. So we're able to fill up that exam time where I will double the amount of exams we do per day, which has been extremely efficient. And so that really opened up a lot of the traffic of people just hanging out there waiting for their exams and the records to these quick 30 minute, um, you know, that if you're not ready to start, we don't even take records. And do, do you feel like, um, has there been any change either in your mind or maybe your patient's mind in terms of the type of appliances they're seeking versus like yeah. this line or, or braces? Absolutely. I mean, is there for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I don't know if that's going up, but Invisalign numbers have gone up, I mean, dramatically. They've gone up dramatically. I won't say they doubled, but they've probably gone up about 33%. Wow. And um, it's, it's, it's been significant. And, you know, I, I don't know if all that's marketing, if that's COVID, but, you know, now, you know, or that's me just changing a couple of words or speeding up my exams and just starting with, so what are you interested in braces or Invisalign? And um, I guess that goes back to, you know, you said the clinical part um, where I've studied enough to, to be able to do Invisalign or braces on any orthodontic patient, any case, we could do either one. Um, and, and, and when they hear that, and then they hear, oh, it's the same price, you know, they, they majority of the time pick Invisalign. Right. And, and I understand from our uh, prior conversation as well that you're doing dental monitoring in your office, which is uh, Absolutely. It's also something that's gained a lot of traction during this, uh, you know, during this time. How has Absolutely. that uh, helped you? Like, how are you guys uh, working that? And that's the question. So I think someone just mentioned it today because I was saying, you know, we're only, we used to, we are seeing about 60% of the amount of patients we used to. And I said, no, it's this COVID schedule. And my team member says, not really, it's the DM. And you know what, she's probably wow. right because through DM, Invisalign visits are zero. They're zero because everything happens virtually. Um, you know, how many times do you see an Invisalign patient for anything other than maybe a broken attachment or a bonded hook that came off? And um, we don't need to see them anymore to see how the trades are fitting because we see them on DM. It's tracked on DM. So those visits are completely gone. So that's, you know, and that's a significant new load of patients. So all we really see now are the orthodontic uh, patients that actually have something we need to do because those are also being tracked on DM. So if the wire still has some deflection or the bite still has a lot of elastic where to go, we can just tell them, you know what, we'll see you on DM at your next visit. And that's it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I, um, you know, I, I, I had a conversation recently with a young orthodontist uh, who was kind of starting out got a practice, got busy, and we were talking about, well, does he bring in an associate or does he invest in technology? And I think a lot yeah. of people are starting to uh, to invest in, 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 in these kinds of technologies, whether it's virtual consult or dental monitoring, Absolutely. To kind of, you know, create that baseline efficiency because it's just harder, I think, to manage people and uh, this oh, yeah. pandemic going on, right? So it's Absolutely. almost like in some ways if you can have uh, technology support your efficiencies rather than oh, yeah. people support it. That seems to be Absolutely. a huge plan. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a great point to touch on because uh, like we talked about before is, you know, I, I decided to bring a director of operations in when the business part started to block what I could do with my orthodontics. Yeah. And um, that's been a great position to fill just to kind of pass off the business part to someone that actually understands how to run a business and how to, you know, just handle larger companies. And it's, it's been, it's been a great position to fill. Wow. So that's kind of like, uh, I guess for you, that would be not even like it's, it's way beyond an office manager, someone who's really kind of really running Correct. that whole operation of your practice. Uh, yeah, exactly. Kind of like, exactly. Uh, you've got your little mini DSO going on there. Exactly. It's like, uh, it's like, I don't know if you're the, if you're the president or the vice president, you know, they, they come tell you what's going on, but you let them make all the calls and you know, that's tough. That's tough. Cause that's not kind yeah. of what we're taught. And most of us, yeah. you know, we want it our way, but you know, once I made that and said, you know what, I'm just going to do it. I just, I just, it's just, it was, it's such a great release and yeah. it's, it's, it's amazing. And, and do you find that that goes kind of hand in hand with some of these other virtual uh, console systems, virtual visit systems? I mean, this is someone I'm assuming you hired who, who didn't work in an orthodontic practice before. I'm just that's throwing right. out a limb, but yeah. That's right. So, so from a business person, you know, cause we often bring things into our practices that we're excited about, you know, it's it's cool technology, 
Uh, we think it'll be valuable for us, for our patients, but we sometimes don't really look at it right in like a business sense. Like, no. is it worthwhile to pay the monthly fee on the software or should we do it our own, like mom and pop, yeah. right? Should we, should we do down monitoring or should we just kind of like, you know, get by the way we were doing it? And I think that it's kind of interesting to get someone else's perspective. So I'm curious, like, what was uh, she or he, uh, whoever this was in your practice, what was their perspective on, on on these expenses you've obviously added in now? Okay. Well, that's the best part is they don't understand ortho so much. So they just go at the numbers and they just crack at the numbers. And when, you, when they looked at the numbers and I looked at, here's how we'd reduce our visits. You know, we didn't expect it to go to zero in this line visits per patient. You know, I mean, I would say two. You're bonding, check, right? This line and check, right? Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, the checks. So how many checks do we get? Well, we we didn't feel comfortable giving people all their trays. So we would do quick checks every 10 to 15 trays. Well, now that number is zero. We don't see them until they're done physically because the rest is done virtually. So right. just the amount of money saved doing that more than more than makes up for the cost of dental monitoring. And 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 here's here's a question, because obviously you're someone, I mean, you've got a director of operations, you've got Bill Lara, you've got virtual consultations with Smile Snap. Invisalign, and your practice is operating at a very high level of technology and efficiency. People in our profession are concerned right now. We're concerned that we're being infringed on by large corporate entities that um, are essentially utilizing these same technologies like yeah. virtual consults, um, you know, um, remote you know, monitoring, uh, and we don't need to mention names. We know who these large yep. corporate entities are. We do. Um, like, just let's just talk as doctors here. Like, as a private practitioner, you own two practices. You're heavily invested in so much with your practices. Where do you see um, the future of our profession going when the people who are competing with us have these same tools? How do you kind of see that? How does that work out for you? Okay. I mean, that's a big question. That, that's yes. a great question. Yeah, and, but I, I'm um, curious from, from your perspective. That's a big question, no, but no, and I, I got an answer. I, I, yeah, I just don't know if everyone, yeah, I just don't know if everyone's going to be happy with my answer, what I see, but <laughs> I see our profession. It's not disappearing because I, you know, our profession's here. And actually, I think, you know, more people want our care than ever before. I think now, it, you know, when I had braces, it was something that very few got, and now very few don't get it. Um, but it's changed. It's changed a lot with the, the AI storing all that data and Invisalign keeping track of everything and all the other companies keeping record of every single thing that's going on. And so they're able to reproduce it um, very accurately with what's going on in computers. So what I did to come up with, you know, my opinion of our future is I looked at medicine and you can see medicine, medicine's got a lot of corporate. You know, if you look in your city, or wherever that might be. I mean, you don't just have the private medical offices anymore where it's a single doctor. You just don't. If, if it is a private, there's probably at least four or five doctors sharing that facility. And in my area, I don't even think there's much of that. Oh, Most of them are. Yes. Yeah. And so I, I can see that happening in orthodontics. And yeah. that doesn't mean that that we have to kind of just go and work for corporate. That just means, you know, maybe we bond together and we do something that the patients want, you know, because patients, they want quality service. Um, but there's so much going on in our lives now with everything, you know, COVID just adds on to it that we just make choices that we don't really know about with our kind of our basic instinct that came with us, you know, with, you know, we're humans, we've survived a lot. So we have a lot of basic instinct is how to handle things we don't know about. A lot of us take easy, but the one that um, now it's changed, well, who's the virtual one? Who's the one that I don't have to see as much? Yeah, And I think it's up to us as a profession to educate patients. That, hey, you know what? You still want to see an orthodontist, but you know what? We can do it the same way they can. We can do it virtually. And guess what? Instead of seeing somebody you'll never meet, you don't know who says doctor, but you don't know what they are. You can come actually physically see us, you know, right here. We can exchange IM messages with you instantly on our phones. And we can answer any questions you have that on the other companies you may never get the answer to. And I so think I that's to... kind of what we have to do. We have to see where things, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, in, in summary, if I, I want to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying, I think it's, this is very big. This is very big what you're yeah. saying. I think what you're essentially saying is it's big. don't be afraid of the technology. The technology, everyone's going to have the technology. Don't be afraid of the technology, sure. but recognize that, that the, like maybe structurally our like profession might change and, and that's okay because we're always going to be the specialists and there's always going to be 
a room yes. and a place for people operating at a, at a high level. Is that kind yeah, of? Sorry. Yeah, that's it. You hit that? the cord that you hit the cord yeah. that got you know you just you just lit the fuse. My motivation, but yeah, our profession is changing. I mean, we we cannot do it the way we did it five years ago or two years ago. We have to see what's going on. We have to see what the people want. Because, well, you know, our profession, you know, we're well trained in that, but that isn't always what the people want. You know, maybe deep down they want it more than anything. They deep down they need it, but what they want and what people, you know, what they want, what they're looking for, isn't what they think they're looking for. And so, you know, I mean, we all know we all had smile direct patients come to our office or other do it yourself aligners come. And I don't have anyone happy with it. Um, but when they've invested in that other first entity, a lot of them are hesitant to do it again. Um, it's really up to us to educate and the new way to educate is changed a lot from what it used to be. It's just changed a lot. Yeah. So we just have to adapt. Now, Elon, this has been fantastic. Uh, always a lot of fun to, to talk to you. And I want to just end our interview tonight with, with one question, which is going to kind of like pivot us back to virtual consultations and to some of the core technologies that we're talking about tonight. Okay. So we're both kind of like in basically urban type environments. You're located near Tampa, which is a very large city in Florida, as well as Orlando, which is a huge kind of you know growing, uh, very vibrant area now in, in, in central Florida. I'm obviously here in LA, you know, large urban environment. Um, you know, most of our profession don't work near large, you know, cities. Uh, we have a, a lot of our you know colleagues are in uh, smaller cities or, or smaller towns. Uh, with, 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 with less dense populations. And sometimes when I speak to doctors, uh, they, they kind of feel maybe that, you know, some of the virtual or digital doesn't really like apply to their practices yeah. and it's actually maybe not what their patients are looking for. Yeah. Um, and it's not what they're interested in. What would you say, like from, from your perspective, because I think you you're someone who's really thought through this, obviously. Yeah. So what not only about yeah, someone like that. I mean, so like, I, I can say I am one of them. So while you know I, my offices are close to Tampa and Orlando, they're both they're both a good drive in. They're 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 in a city that's kind of like a suburb of a suburb. So it's kind of it, it's not totally rural, but it, it's not quite as large as you know the big okay. city. So I, I totally understand where they're coming from. And what I can say is, when when you go to those cities, everyone still has an iPhone. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone still listening to the same music everyone still has their own laptops and iPads and Apple watches. So, you know, rural or not, we're in the U S and they all want the same thing. They want the same thing. Interesting. Interesting. So don't, yeah. So don't, and now again, I would say we can't, I can't go and charge as much as my friends charge for Invisalign or I can't, you know, do some more luxurious things, but that doesn't take away from what they want. They still want the same thing. So and don't and, let that affect you. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's really kind of, that's a huge take home message here that whether you're like me here in Los Angeles or Elon, like you, uh, I guess in the more, you know, not rural, but more suburban area, I guess, Yeah, you know, more suburban, people are sure. people and the forces right. that are, are, are working either with us or against us or just the forces that are out there are out mm -hmm. there and we kind of like need to pivot it feels like right i mean it feels like we need oh, to adapt, sure. or like kind of thrive sure. or, or just yep, for you know. sure and if you and if you question that i mean just pay attention i mean just ask when you go to work how many of my patients have their their touchscreen iphones and apple watches and it's, if it's not most of them then you know you can stay with what you're doing but it's probably not it's probably yeah. going to be most of them have their touchscreen phones and their apple watches yeah well, Elon, this has just been a fantastic uh, interview. Uh, I want to thank uh, you for your time, and uh, for, uh, thank you, Alex, for inviting for, for joining us. This has been fantastic, and um, you know, I hope that uh, for those of you who have listened to this, you've learned a lot. And uh, and Elon, we look forward to seeing you sometime soon when we can get together in person. Yes, maybe a meeting, sure. maybe uh, sure. you know, taking the fam to down to Florida. So uh, either absolutely, way. anytime. We're right by. We're right Tampa, and Orlando. We're right here all right. Alex thank you and if anyone has any questions that they ask you feel free to shoot them out at me I'll be happy to answer them all right great Elon thank you so much have a great evening thank, thank you, you Alex you too all thank right. you lots of fun take care man bye